Good morning, I'm Annie Larkin, the Associate Curator of Public Programs at the Ameren Museum, and welcome to Through the Lens of Navajo Photographer Priscilla Ticini. Before we begin the program today, I want to acknowledge that Ameren is located in southeastern Arizona, on lands where the Otham, Hopi, Oshwi, and Apache families lived for untold generations, and whose wisdom and traditions live on today in vibrant communities. We are grateful for what all these communities, rich in history, have to teach us. Ameren would also like to extend a special thank you to today's program sponsor, Arizona GNT Cooperatives. Their generous support has enabled Ameren to bring this free online programming to our audience today. And thank you to our members and donors who enable Ameren to provide free online programming and fulfill Ameren's mission to promote the knowledge and understanding of the native peoples of the Americas through research, education, conservation, and community engagement. To learn how you can assist Ameren in supporting its mission and programs by becoming a member or donor, please visit Ameren.org. As a reminder, the Ameren Museum is open with safety protocols in place, such as requiring the use of masks and social distancing. To plan your trip to Ameren, please go to the visit section of our website, Ameren.org. On Saturday, July 24th at 11 a.m., Ameren will host the free online program, Water Flow, Water Quality on the Hopi Reservation with photographer Christine, Kathleen Vello. Then on July 31st at 11 a.m., Ameren will host the free online gallery talk, Consumption Earth, Art in the Anthropocene Age with artist Neil Galloway. Please visit the event section of our website, Ameren.org, or the event section of Ameren's Facebook page for registration details. You can also experience art from both of these artists in the exhibit Parched on display at Ameren now through January 16th, 2022. Now I'd like to introduce our speaker today. Priscilla Ticini's passion for photography centers on her love of seeking a connection with Mother Earth and Father Sky. Her skill in capturing the essence and drama of nature reflected in her deep reverence for the remote corners of the landscapes, she is able to capture and connect to the power and beauty of the world. As a member of the Navajo Nation, she feels it is important to capture the beauty of her people documenting cultural images, as well as creating conceptual art pieces that are inspired by her cultural traditions, beliefs, and stories. I am very happy to share with our audience that an exhibit featuring Priscilla's photography opened to Ameren this week and will be on display until March 31st, 2022. And also you can purchase her works of art through her Etsy store, and the title for that is Squash Blossom Photos, and that's photos with an F. If you'd like to ask any questions during the program today, please type your questions in the Q&A chat box. We'll be gathering those questions to share with our speaker after her presentation. And we are also recording today's program and a link to the video will be sent to all of our Zoom registrants later today. And with that, I will pass it on to you, Priscilla. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, welcome everyone. My name is Priscilla Tacchini. I'm a Navajo photographer from Prescott Valley, Arizona. It's an honor to be here and I'd like to thank Annie and the Ameren Museum for inviting me to speak to you about my work in photography. I'm excited to have my work exhibited at the museum titled Through the Lens of Navajo Photographer Priscilla Tacchini. I like to give thanks to Eric Kudal for putting the exhibit together he did a wonderful job and I can't wait to come out and see it myself. I will be participating in this year's Autumn Fest in October and I look forward to meeting you all in person if you plan on going. I was born and raised on the Navajo Reservation and grew up in a little town called Kayanta. My appreciation for the arts started when I was a teenager. It led me to a degree in graphic design 
After working several years as a graphic artist, I felt it was time to find a medium in fine art. I enrolled myself into a beginning digital photography class at a local community college. Once I obtained the basic knowledge of working a digital camera, I started to experiment and photograph different subjects that caught my eye. I found myself photographing landscapes more than anything else. So I began to travel to many scenic areas in Arizona, looking to capture the beauty of Mother Earth and Father Sky. Through the lens of my camera, I began to see the details and beauty of the landscape and started to feel a connection with nature's subject and its energy. Each photo session was unique and it required me to apply a different set of technical and artistic considerations. My work in the field helped me appreciate the, and embrace the wonder of the earth and sparked a passion inside me that made me want to pursue photography as an art form. The working model I used when I first approached landscape photography was to get out there and practice. Seek inspiration from other photographers and consider how they photographed the scene. Once I've gained the experience and technical knowledge, I began to discard some of the pr procedures, favor others, and began to develop new ones of my own. In post-production, I spent hundreds of hours learning how to process and edit my photos. I purchased and read many books and watched hours of tutorials on YouTube and, and other uh, photography websites. Shortly after I completed my photography course, I entered a few of my photographs in the Arizona State Fair photography competition and won several first place ribbons for my work. This gave me the confidence to start printing and selling my work at various Native American art shows, such as the Herb Museum Indian Fair, Santa Fe Indian Market, and several other markets across Arizona, Utah, and Colorado. Here are some samples of my landscape photo, photographs. As a nature photographer, I've become more aware of the deterioration of our planet's natural areas. Commercial expansion and climate change are changing the landscapes at an accelerated rate. Therefore, it's become important to me to capture the, and document the beauty that still exists today. After two years of photography for uh, photographing landscapes, I was ready to experience with portrait photography. I found portraiture to be a little more challenging. It required me to learn more about lighting and posing. I had to pay more attention to composition and details in the image and learn how to capture the spirit of the individual in the portrait. Now I often seek to incorporate a human subject into my images. Coming from a culturally rich background, it's become important to me to capture the beauty of my people and share it with the rest of the world. Shooting at night is a hard skill to master and can be exceptionally frustrating to capture if you don't know what you're doing. But because it can produce some of the most stunning images, it was a challenge I was willing to master. Night photography takes place at any time between dusk and dawn. You have to be able to work in the dark and work with camera, the camera's limitation. When I think about how I'm going to take a night photo, I have to think a lot more about camera settings and composition. Several long exposures are required to take nightscape photographs. I first began by taking a photograph of the foreground, which could be a tree, rock, or landscape. Then I uh, take several exposures of the night sky and I combine them all in post-processing, bringing the one image together. So it requires a lot of planning, time, and patience. My work continues to evolve. 
There are many photographers lately that have photographed the same landscapes or scenery. For me to stand out from the rest, I had to get creative and think of outside the box. And this led me to a type of illustrative photography known as conceptual uh, photography. My conceptual photography are images I've taken and blended together using Photoshop. To illustrate a scene or a visual description of what I'm <clears throat> trying to bring to life, I find it more challenging and gratifying to create images that come from a storytelling aspect. My goal is to create more cohesive bodies of work, images that have crucial meaning to my people and myself. Some of my um, conceptual art pieces are inspired by cultural experiences and teachings from the Navajo creation stories and mythology. It's important to me to continue to live and grow and find new ways to present my work with retelling these stories from my own perspective. In this next part of the presentation, I'd like to share with you some of the landscape photography I have for sale at the museum and tell you a little bit more where I shot the landscape and nightscape photographs and go over some of the inspiration and stories behind my portraits and conceptual art pieces. If you are not unable to stop by the museum, you can purchase any of these photographs by visiting my website, um, my Etsy shot. Um, both uh, links will be posted throughout this presentation. He will start with this photograph. This photograph is titled Hogan Under the Stars. This photograph was taken um, near Goulding's, Utah, a small community across Monument Valley Tribal Park. Monument Valley Navajo Tribal Park is lo located near the Arizona-Utah border. The dwelling in this photograph is called a Hogan. It's a traditional home of my people and is made of logs and mud. The photograph of the Hogan was shot during the blue hour after sunset and the photograph of the Milky Way galaxy was taken later that night. Both photos were combined to com uh, together to complete the shot. This photograph titled um, Stardust Tree was taken in, in Monument Valley Tribal Park. Uh, a photograph of the juniper tree with the Milky Way galaxy in the background. For this photograph, uh, we used a spotlight to light up the tree. My husband lit the tree for a few seconds with a spotlight for one shot, and then I took several exposures of the sky um, and combined them all in for this one shot. Also, while I was exposing for the sky, there happened to be someone driving um, by which lit up the mesa in the background. A star stacking program was used in post processing and is used in all in my uh, used all in my nightscape photographs. Uh, this photograph of um, Elephant's Feet Galaxy was taken um, near uh, Tuba City, Arizona. Uh, because these rock formations are next to a highway, I was able to capture a photograph of the rock formations um, lit up by the passing vehicle. This shot was combined, combined with uh, other exposures I took of the sky. I used a star stacking program to bring out the details of the stars and the galaxy. Morning Desert Blooms. Uh, this photograph was taken at Bartlett Lake, Arizona in the spring of 2019. A huge winter storm brought a lot of snow in February that year 
And so I knew I had to get out there and take some photographs of the spring flowers. Minutes before sunrise and at sun, uh, at sunrise and at sunset is the best time to capture the light and uh, the colors of the landscape and the sky. I uh, scouted this location the day before and returned in the morning to capture this beautiful display of spring flowers across the desert landscape. Uh, roadway to the stars. This uh, photograph was taken um, on a highway leading towards Monument Valley, Utah. It's a, an iconic stretch of an American highway made famous by a movie, uh, Forrest Gump. The photograph of the road leading towards Monument Valley was shot during the blue hour after sunset. I took several shots later that evening when the Milky Way galaxy appeared and combined the photographs together to complete this shot. The shot of the galaxy was shot up to the side of the road because it requires several long exposures. I used the star stacking program to combine all the exposures together, which minimizes the noise you get from taking photographs at a high ISO and helps bring out the details of the stars and the galaxy. This photograph was taken at um, Upper Antelope Canyon near Page, Arizona. This is probably one of the most stressful experiences I had taking a photograph. I signed up for a photography tour with several other photographers. I thought that by signing up for the tour, we would have the whole canyon to ourselves, but quickly I realized it was going to be uh, a shoot with several other tours happening at the same time. This tested my ability to shoot quickly and to share small space with other photographers. Because of the pandemic, the slot canyons have been closed to the public. Um, according to our Navajo president, Jonathan Nance, the reopening of the Antelope Canyons and Navajo parks will happen soon. So I encourage you to visit this location when it opens back up and help bring back Navajo tourism to my people. Um, both upper and lower antelope canyons are, mo are the most beautiful uh, slot canyons created by nature. And if you're there just at the right moments, you will view the sunbeams coming down from the above the canyon walls. Reaching for the stars. This uh, photograph was taken at Mono Valley Tribal Park. The Navajo people believe that mittens are, the mittens are hands reaching out from the world below. The photograph of the mittens was shot during the blue hour after sunset and the photograph of the Milky Way was taken later in the night. And both photographs were combined together to complete this shot. Um, Shiprock Galaxy. This photograph was taken at Shiprock, New Mexico. The rock is, is sacred to the Navajo people and is called the rock with wings. According to legend, in, it is the remains of a giant bird that carried the Navajo people from the north to New Mexico. The photograph the, of the rock was shot during the blue hour after sunset and the photographs of the Milky Way was taken later at night and both photos were combined together co to complete this shot. Socorro Galaxy. This photograph was taken near Baghdad, um, Arizona. Several exposures was taken and was processed with the star stack stacking program to bring out the details of the stars and the galaxy. Uh, light pollution from Phoenix can be seen at the lower half of the sky.
Canyon Waves. This photograph was taken at Lower Antelope Canyon and was taken there one of the earlier visits to the canyon. Colors of the canyon walls will change throughout the day and light will shift in different directions within minutes. In the summertime, colors of the canyon tend to be warmer and in the wintertime, colors are more cooler. Spring sunrise. The best times for landscape photography is at sunrise and sunset. When I make a plan to shoot a landscape photograph, I scout the area several hours before the shoot for sunset, sunset shots. I will scout the area the day before. For sunset shots, I will scout the, um, the area several hours before sunset. This uh, photograph was taken at Bartlett Lake at sunrise. One of my favorite shots to do while shooting landscapes is to shoot when the sun rises over the horizon. In this case, just above the mountain range. This photograph was shot at a different exposure and focus points and blended together in post-processing. I do this to create more of a dynamic range so that expo the exposure between the sky and the photograph are equally balanced. Grand Canyon Sunset. This photograph was taken from the south rim of the Grand Canyon. After an afternoon of heavy cloud cover, I was able to capture the last bit of sunlight coming through the clouds at sunset. The sunlight lit up the canyon in the middle of the, the north and south rim, which made this one one of my favorite shots of the canyon. Hunts Mesa Sunset. This photograph was taken from an over uh, look called Hunts Mesa. It is located south of Monument Valley Tribal Park. I've been very fortunate to have been to this location several times in my photography career. To visit this area, you have to hire a, a tour guide to take you in. The dirt road to this location is very rough and only a high clearance vehicle and expert 4x4 driver can take you there. This was shot at sunset when the last bit of light was coming across the valley below. Mesa Arch Sunrise. This uh, sunrise photograph of Mesa Arch was taken at Canyonlands National Park in Utah. I shot this in January and it was one of the coldest weathers I, I experienced as a photographer. Two exposures were taken for this shot, one exposure for the sun and sky and the other for the mesa and foreground. Summer's End, this photograph was taken at the entrance of Sunset uh, Crater near Flagstaff. Passing through Flagstaff one afternoon, I noticed a large amount of sunflowers by the roadway and knew this would be a great opportunity for a landscape photograph. So we drove out to this field near Sunset Crater entrance to capture this shot. Sometimes an unplanned photo shoot can be a great thing. In 2010, the Schultz fire burned this side of the mountain and unfortunately it no longer looks like this today. Pastel Dreams. This uh, photograph was taken at White Sands National Monument located in Southern New Mexico. We had only planned on visiting this area for one day. And at the time I only had one particular shot in mind and that was for a portrait of myself, which you will see later on in this presentation. 
So once the portrait was done, we explored more of the area and I was able to capture the landscape, this landscape photograph, which is one of my favorites because of the last, because the last bit of light painted the landscape with beautiful pastel colors. Surrounded by beauty. This photograph was taken at Watson Lake near um, Prescott, Arizona. Sometimes when photographing a landscape after sunset, the sunlight will hit the clouds above and reflect the light back down onto the landscape and create colorful tones and soft lighting. This works well with lake shots because you can capture reflection of the clouds in the water and have a mirroring, mirroring effect. This photograph was shot after sunset during monsoon season. Guardians of the East. This photograph was taken at Shiprock, New Mexico. This is a, a composite photograph of horses, the rock formation and the moon. The peak and their surrounding land are great religious and historical, historical significance to the Navajo. Uh, Shiprock and the horses are prominent figures in the Navajo mythology. Rainbow Galaxy. This photograph was taken near Flagstaff, Arizona. A nightscape photograph of the Milky Way galaxy in San Francisco peaks. The photograph of the San Francisco peaks was taken during the blue hour and was combined with the shots of the Milky Way uh, that was taken later that night. A forest fire behind the peaks gave an orange glow on the right side of the Milky Way galaxy, which made this shot uh, night sky more colorful and unique. Rainbow God Goddess. This is a photograph of uh, Teardrop Arch, which is located outside of Monument Valley. The symbolic nature of the rainbow is a manifestation of life giving rain is universal. Rainbows have a strong religious significance to the Navajo. The arch and rainbow was captured just before sunset. Twilight Strike. This photograph was taken at um, White Sands National Monument. On our way out of White Sands, I noticed lightning strikes in the distance and we pulled over for the last few shots of the area. I took several long exposures to shoot, um, to um, see if I could capture a lightning shot. And this is what I was able to capture. This is before I started photogra uh, photographing night skates and I hope to return here someday soon to take some nighttime galaxy shots. Serenity. This uh, photograph was inspired um, by a um, Navajo painter whose name was R.C. Gorman. Uh, he primarily painted Native uh, American women. My idea was to capture an image that is simple and elegant, but impactful and bold, evoking feeling and thought of the subject. This is a self portrait of myself taken at White Sands National Park in New Mexico. Corn pollen path. Navajo teachings say that all life forms come from yellow pollen. 
This is a portrait of a young Navajo woman offering corn pollen to the holy people. Normally when an offering is made, the pollen falls to the ground. But I chose to make the pollen to go in a spiral direction. The spiral is also a sacred symbol, symbol of the Navajo. It is said that our spirit enters our body through the spiral pattern on top of our head known as the calic. Uh, spiral patterns are everywhere. They appear on the fingertips in plant growth and in formations of the galaxy. So for me, adding this spiral to the portraiture was, has a significant meaning. Hero twins, um, also known as the monster slayers. Uh, this photograph was inspired by a story about the Hero Twins from the Navajo creation story. The Hero Twins, also known as the Monster Slayers, in the tale of the Hero Twins, the story recounts the trials of two young brothers who travel across the land hunting and battling a race of monsters who were destroying human life. They eventually uh, eliminated all the monsters and brought back peace and harmony to the Navajo people. The rainbow and lightning are important elements in the story and were added to this photograph to complete their story. The area that this photograph was taken is west of uh, Tuba City, Arizona, near an area where there are dinosaur tracks. Male and female rain. In Navajo belief, there's a male and female to all things above, below, and around us. Thunderstorm, lightning, and heavy rain re represent the male rain. Gentle, soothing, slow moving rain represents the female rain. The landscape part of the male rain in this photograph is or this um, conceptual art piece is Canyon de Shea. And the landscape in the female um, conceptual art is uh, Monument Valley. Coyote's creation. This photograph was inspired by a story from the Navajo creation story. First man, first woman, and the holy ones laid out sacred stones on a piece of animal hide and planned out the constellations. As they were carefully placing each star, Coyote was watching in the distance. On the fourth day, he became impatient and grabbed the hide and threw the remaining stars in the sky and created the Milky Way galaxy. Photograph of the coyote was taken um, here at local zoo and the mountain, the photograph of the mountain is San Francisco Peaks, which is one of the sacred mountains to the Navajo. The galaxy was taken um, on the Navajo reservation and the photograph of the hide was taken in my home. Um, White Shell Girl Unification with the Moon. Inspired by a, a story in the Navajo creation story. The moon along with certain constellations were used to measure the patterns of seasons. It helped signal when to plant, to harvest, and when certain weather patterns were expected and when certain ceremonies should occur. White Shell Girl was um, asked to enter into the moon by the first by first man and first woman and the holy people. Before she entered the moon, she asked for the authority to control the tides with her movements, and they agreed.
female revolver. This concept piece was inspired by the story of the stars. In the Navajo creation story, first man and first woman and the holy people created constellations to help the people understand the passage of time, growth and aging. First woman constructed a pattern she called fem the female revolver, also known as Cassiopeia. Beauty Within. This is a black and white photograph of uh, my, uh, my niece. Um, the photograph in um, is of Monument Valley as well. Special effects was applied to this concept piece for a double exposure effect. Najoni in the Clouds, a portrait of a young woman walking through the chaos of the clouds towards the light, <clears throat> seeking guidance from the holy people through ceremony and prayer in hopes for a prosperous future in health, knowledge and relationship and spirituality. Round Valley. This photograph started out as a panoramic shot of Monument Valley taken from Hunts Mesa. A spe special filter in this photograph was applied to the shot to, to bend the landscape into a circular shape. I had to blend the two ends of the landscapes together to make it appear seamless. And then I added uh, one of my galaxies she galaxy, galaxy shots to the center of the image. Okay, I'd like to turn this time back to Annie and answer any questions our audience may have. Again, thank you, Annie and Emmer Museum for putting this together. It has been an honor honor and privilege to be a part of this online presentation. Thank you all who joined us on this Zoom and those for you who will view this at a later time. I um, hope you have enjoyed your time and many blessings to you and continue to be safe out there. Thank you. Thank you so much, Priscilla. That was an absolutely fabulous presentation that you provided us. Um, we're getting so many <clears throat> pardon me, words of praise, as well as words of inspiration. You're inspiring people to grab their cameras and go out and uh, photograph the world. So thank you. <clears throat> One question that we have gotten from multiple people is what type of camera and lenses do you use? Um, <clears throat> I started, well, some of my landscape photographs are shot with the uh, Nikon D90. And um, that was my earlier uh, shots. And then now I use a Nikon D750. Um, I own about four different lenses. I have a 28 to 300 millimeter, uh, 1.35 to 5.6. And I have a 28 millimeter, 1.8. Uh, I also have a 50 millimeter 1.8 and an 85 millimeter 1.8. And I just purchased a um, Sam Yang uh, 14 millimeter. So I actually have five lenses now. And what was the determining factor that took you on the path to becoming a photographer? Um, just started out taking the the photography class um, and then going out and practicing with my camera uh, and then just instantly fell in love with um, taking pictures and um, just became a it just sparked a passion 
and I just started wanting to go out and take pictures um, more and more. Are color filters used to enhance the colors in your photos? Um, I process all my um, photos um, using Lightroom and then I will uh, take, take it into Photoshop and I will um, enhance the colors a little bit, a little bit more, um, increase the highlights and uh, the shadows um, to just give it a little bit more of a punch because when you photograph, I shoot in, in, uh, in raw, so it's kind of like a negative and when you um, upload it into Lightroom, the photograph is actually really flat um, because the uh, camera sensor is picking up all these different uh, um, uh, colors and detail. And so what you, use, what you do is you go into Lightroom to come bring out those colors a bit more and um, work with the highlights and the shadows and stuff like that. And just to give it more of a, a, a balanced look and not so flat. Um, that's, yeah. All right. And so, uh, for example, for your photograph reaching for the stars, is that the process you would have uh, employed? Um, Reaching for the stars. <clears throat> yeah, I actually shot the photograph of the mittens um, after the sunset. Took that shot at uh, a regular, probably um, F8 or an F11 um, at a ISO 100. So um, I won't have a lot of noise. And then later on, took the photograph, several photographs of the galaxy um, at a higher um, ISO and then um, process those and then use Photoshop to um, put them together. And how long on average does it take you to compose a photograph? Um, it depends. Um, Actually, it probably well, what happens when I go out and I photograph a scene, I will um, expose, depending on the situation, um, if I have fairly, fairly even light, I, I can take one, maybe two shots. I usually shoot for the foreground. Uh, focus, what, what you call focus stacking. I focus for the foreground and then I focus for the, uh, for the, um, for further back, further back in the, in the photograph. And then I will put those two together. So then you'll have a uh, focus range from the beginning to the back of the, in of the image. Um, and then also when I'm photographing maybe uh, like sunsets or sunrises, I also will have to um, do the focus stacking um, thing and then also do exposure. So I have to exposure, uh, um, pick the exposure for the foreground and then pick a different exposure for the sky. Because usually when you're shooting towards the sun, you, when you're exposing for the sky, your foreground is dark. And then, so when you're um, exposing for the foreground, then your sky is blown out. So I like to take uh, several different exposures, maybe about three of them. And then also the focusing part of it as well, focus my um, camera to the foreground and then the background, and then combine all those together. So it does take some time um, blending all those two, those um, images together. Um, I don't know, I probably average between 
I don't know, maybe getting it just right the way I like it, maybe up to two hours of processing time, maybe. And do you always carry your camera and lenses with you? Uh, yes, I, I, I try to take that with me a lot. Um, I do have a, a large um, camera bag. I keep everything in there. Um, I haven't been, to tell you the truth, I haven't been doing a lot of uh, landscape photography lately, mostly because of the weather. Um, it's been pretty uh, dry out there, have dry conditions. There's not a lot of whole, uh, whole lot of clouds in the sky. And I, for me, I like to photograph when there's clouds there. It adds more drama and there's more color. So um, I'm hoping uh, that monsoon season will kind of kick up in over here and then I can go back out there and take some photographs. Um, but also with the, having clear, clear skies is kind of a good thing. Also, that gives me an opportunity to go out and um, photograph the Milky Way, which is now just coming, coming back, um, able to see the um, center of the galaxy now. So I, I'm hoping to get out there and um, start shooting again. And do you offer classes? Um, no, I don't. I don't have any classes. I've had um, been approached a few times by people asking if I was willing to do a one-on-one -on -one, um, um, how to go out in the field and how to shoot. And I'm open to that. If anybody wants to come uh, um, and have me show them uh, some of the basic um, um, techniques of shooting, um, I'm happy to do that. Uh, if anybody wants to uh, come out here or, or meet me somewhere, and then I can show you um, uh, what how to do that. Um, I do as far as um, showing how to post post post, um, post processing. Um, that's I I would probably begin. I would probably tell people to. There's many many videos online on um, YouTube that you can probably learn from other photographers that way. And you can learn it from your own house. Um, so I would do it like that. And would contacting you through your Squash Blossom Photos website be the best way for people to reach out to you? Yeah, I, I have, um, I believe I have my phone number and I have my email address. So if you just went, uh, visit my website, you'll be able to get a hold of me. And is there a website or a other source where you um, obtain your information about when it is best to photograph and view the stars? Um, the program I currently use, <clears throat> there's actually um, a lot of photographers recommend a uh, a, a phone app it's called photo pills i haven't downloaded that app yet um but it um it's supposed to be a really good uh photo app for photographers um maybe look into that it's called photo pills and then the one i use on my phone is called um stellarium and that app just tells tells me uh when the uh, when there there's a moonrise, um, when their galaxy is is gonna come up, the time, the sunset, and everything. It just it's a it's a it's a it's a free. Well, I don't know if it was free, but I think I paid just a little a, a little amount for the for the app, and, and it works well for me. What type of camera would you recommend for a beginning photographer for landscape photos? Um, when I started out in photography, um, I started out with uh, Nikon D50. And um, I, 
I think if you're just starting out, I would start out with something pretty, um, pretty simple. I, I don't know what other brands of um, cameras there is out there um, that is, um, that you can be to be to begin with. Um, I'm not sure um, where I, I found, um, I can't remember the name of the website. Um, I, I can't remember, but I look at the reviews and they give you um, the cameras that you need to start. You know, if you're an amateur, if you're just um, a professional, they have a list of cameras that are, they, they can recommend that you use, um, you want to use for the whatever level you're starting at, but I can't remember the the name of the website off the top of my head right now. No um, problem. And yeah. for our last question: What effect, if any, has COVID had on your photography? Oh, uh, Steve's camera. Go to Steve's camera. I'm sorry. Before I answer the other question, it's called Steve's camera. Um, a review. Or something like that. You can Google that, and then you'll be able to. Um, he they review all the cameras, and then you can see which cameras will fit your level of photography. Um, as far as COVID, it has the last year uh, has really um, all my shows were all canceled. My art shows, the Indian markets were all. Um, canceled um some of them um like santa fe in the market uh set up a uh, uh a website or where you could sign up and get a website done and um they had like a virtual um um thing on their website for um, people to um shop with us virtually um but yeah, uh, and I also, um, during the springtime, I also do uh, a lot of senior portraits. And last year, I only had maybe one just before the pandemic broke. So it really slowed down a whole lot last year for me. So it was a little rough, but I made it through and everything's coming, coming back. So um I'm happy to and excited to be part of all these art festivals that are coming up. And we're excited to, to see you at these festivals and also very excited at Ameren to have your work on exhibit. And again, uh, Priscilla's work will be on exhibit at Ameren through March 31st, 2022. So make sure you get out there and have a chance to view her beautiful works in person. Priscilla, thank you so much for spending your morning with us today. You're welcome. I enjoyed myself. Um, thank you for having me. Um, hoping everybody um, continues to stay safe. And thanks so much to all of our registrants. And we will be sending out a video of Priscilla's talk uh, later today in the event you missed any of it or would like to go back and review, review her beautiful work. And we hope we see you all on July 24th for our next online program with photographer Kathleen Bellow. Thank you all so much. Take care now.